Are you coming? Bob. Bob. <laughs> what do you think, Bob? <laughs> Bob's an outdoor kitty usually, but he does not like the snow. Huh, Bob? Okay, guys, it's Colorado. We got over a foot of snow last night, and it's still snowing. It's supposed to snow oh, a lot <laughs> all day. So this is what it looks like, a winter wonderland. Oh, I see the sun trying to come out. Hopefully that happens soon. <laughs> But we're on our way to do the morning winter feeding. I can't, we came out here last night to give my goats, sorry I might be muffled, <laughs> to give our goats some hay and we just put it inside the barn. Gosh, I can't even tell where to walk here. <laughs> and uh, so they'd be nice and warm, they wouldn't even have to come out to get hay. Just water. Oh, and there my babies are. Sorry, I'm filming. I'm doing all this myself, guys. So sorry about the unsteadiness. And there they are. All the cute little babies. And it's disgusting. So I wanted to show you guys. I did get all of my little name plates done. My two bucks. And all the ladies. And these are the goats I plan on keeping as milk toes. Oh, Carmela is going to be retired this year because she is probably about 9 or 10 and the last couple times she's had babies she has had some complications so anyway there's my milking stand it's pretty dirty in here right now because nobody's in milk so in Colorado I like to wait till December to breed my goats because I like it to be warm out here when they go in birth and, uh, or sorry, when they go into labor. And also, just milking is pretty cold in the morning, so. Um, the one good thing about Colorado is it does work. Hey, sweetie! She's so grumpy. Maybe she's in heat. But, uh, she... <clears throat> It gets pretty warm, warmed back up in Colorado here, so uh, I will do a video of cleaning this thing out because it does get dirty fast with this many goats. And June. <laughs> June! June is my friendliest baby, huh? She's friendly. Yeah, she loves scratches. <laughs> mm, she's so pretty. Gosh, there's so much like dogs. Ah, June. Carmela, what do you think? She's like, I'm camera shy. There's Jack, my other weather. They're friendly enough, but they don't let me really like pet them or anything. So I'm working on it though. <laughs> One thing goats do a lot is eat and poop. And they like to poop, obviously, where they lay, where they eat. 
the black one over there pooped on top of the hay bale last night. And probably would have peed on it too if I wouldn't have shoot him. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? We named him Jack after Jack Skellington. And then, of course, his sister Sally right there. That look, looked at me. Sally! I think she knows her name. Sally! Sally! It's you! These goats made a hole in their barn thing. I put that in front of there so they wouldn't break the glass, and they decided they needed a window to see out. Silly goats. So I've got a lot of goats this winter, which is going to be interesting to feed. Um, I did find a good deal on some hay, but... Uh, I have six mamas, which I retained two of the babies from last year, and then they, surprise, surprise, got pregnant early, and uh, so now I have six mamas and seven babies and two adult weathers. Wow, sweetie, that was mean. Sweetie's a big bully. So, it can get crowded in here during grain time, but it's still enough room for all of them. <laughs> Loretta! I'm sorry, Loretta. Loretta! There's her daughter, Sally, which is one of the ones I retained from last year. And then the two, uh, the other one next to her, that's Willow and her brother Jack next to her. He's a weather also. But yes, sweetie over there is the Alpha and Omega. There's her daughter Cupcake and Jack is the black one, her son. Those are the last two babies she had. <laughs> and it's uh, 41, 42 degrees here in the barn, so... Having a barn for your goats in a cold weather area is extremely important because they hate snow and wetness. So, even though this morning, Miss Patsy right there with the black on her back. Don't choke! So I always supervise them when they're eating grain here. But, uh... As I saying, she was out in the snow with an inch of snow on her back because she's in heat. Hi, June. June bug. June. 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 Hi. Yeah, so it's the time of their heat. And they're all kind of grumpy and they hate the snow. So... Okay, so tonight I'm going to show you guys how to make these no-sew bow ties. I'm going to take your piece of fabric, and if you buy them in little square pieces like this, um, they should be folded up into perfect 
into a perfect uh, piece that you'll need. So you want to take it and cut it along this line like so. This is how I do it. <laughs> Take this long piece and iron it flat. Doesn't take much. Then you're going to turn it over or leave it to the side you have. It doesn't matter which side you iron it on, but for this part, you need to turn it over and you're going to fold this side down about a half an inch and then iron it down so that it's kind of permanently folded down and we're going to do this side It doesn't have to be exactly a half an inch. Um, you just want to make sure that the ends line up together so you don't have any sticking out. <clears throat> okay. Now this is what it should look like. You're going to take it and fold it in half this way. Make sure all the pieces are laying flat underneath each other. Iron it there, and this will make two bow ties, because we're now going to cut this piece in half. Now you have two. Now. You're also going to fold them in half again. And iron them down. Making sure the both ends over here are lined up nice and straight. So it's true to have these. Okay, so now you have two of these. Now to get rid of these edges, you want to chop off any string, extra strings that we may have. So I try to not burden myself with the iron. Some of them will just pull right off. Now you're going to want to open it back up. We're going to fold the ends in and iron those down. Like so.
Okay. And then you'll take and fold that back in half like so. Make sure everything is lined up perfectly. And again, iron. For this one, I like to leave it on there for a second. Get it all nice and flat. Okay. Now, next, oops, I should not do that. I will take my glue gun, peel this up. And do a small line, like so. Carefully place it back down so it is lined up. And then for extra measure, I put the iron back on. That gets the glue to soak into the fabric a lot better. And you now have a nicely edged piece. We'll move on to this one while that one kind of cools down. I just love this material, it's so cute. <clears throat> Careful not to burn yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and now, so you have the square, and you're going to go like this. Pull it like a xylophone kind of deal. And you can also go like that. Um, I'm going to try and go ahead and iron it like this this time and see what happens, if that helps. Because one of them I made looks straight on one side, but the other side it just doesn't look as good. So. Let's see what this does. Oh yeah, that makes it a lot easier, you guys. See that? Crisp and clean. Okay.
Next, we'll be making the middle part. I'm going to go ahead and use the same material. And just cut about a half inch strip. And try to cut as cleanly as you can so you don't have little strings hanging off. The scissors aren't that great. <laughs> but you really only need about four, four or five inches there. And I'm going to now put this together in the middle. Make sure it's in the middle. You don't want it to end up crooked, like my last one. <laughs> and then, so in each crease, you'll want to put a little drop of it, making sure you're straight. Just keep pinching that together until it's dry. And the one thing I hate about using the glue gun is the glue strings. They remind me of spider webs. <laughs> okay. So then I'm going to do one with the pink in the middle, like that. so you can judge it. Now I'm going to take and put one little droplet. Um, you guys can tell this is the front, this is the back. But, actually no, this is the front. <laughs> this is the back because it's got all the seams and stuff. So what I, oops, I start it on the back so that the part you want showing is on the top. That did not work out well. Okay, starting over. Guys, be careful not to burn yourself because this hot glue hurts. If you're worried about it, you can use the end of your scissors. <laughs> there we go. And then you might have to, you know, poke it out a little bit. There we go. Another one down. So this one I want to do maybe the arrow. No, I'll do both. Again, 
small dots, not too much, so it'll come out the sides. And it does take a while to cool down, so just take your time. So two strips of the material and I made four of these and did do this one with the gray. See this is the one that I kind of messed up, it's not very long as that is, that's better. So yeah, now I can make little collars for my kitties and puppies. Can you shake? Sit. Sit. Shake. Aww. Oh, look at that pretty girl. Wait, go back over there. Touch us. Touch us. Sit. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Show Mama how pretty you are with your bow. <laughs> oh, look at that girl and her pretty bow. So furry. Look at Lucky the Bummer Cat. 